Today, we add some LEDs to our Creality Ender 3 Pro. My name is Alex, and you're watching Modified 3D. So taking a look at what we're gonna need here to do the install, we're obviously gonna need our LEDs, and I have both white and red colors because I'm gonna be doing white on the back of the gantry and red underneath the printer to create a underglow effect. We're gonna want a LMC buck converter, and this is gonna convert our power from 24 volts given off of the power supply unit, and it's gonna drop it down to the 12 volts that we need to run these LEDs. We're obviously gonna need a case or an enclosure for that. I'm gonna also be installing two switches, and these are gonna power on and off each the red and the white LEDs. I've got a mount to hold the switches. You're obviously gonna wanna print out something to hold the LED strips. These two small ones are gonna be sliding on the rails underneath the printer and creating that underglow effect while this larger one gets bolted to the back of the gantry and it's gonna shine down on the print bed. We got some wire sheathing, just to make sure that everything looks clean. I'm gonna be using JST XH connectors, just as little jumpers and to connect everything. Um, you're also gonna be needing some crimpers for those. You don't have to use JST connectors, you can use butt connectors or spade connectors or even just solder everything all in one big loop with no connectors. And then obviously we're gonna need some wire. This is just some 22 gauge wire. I'll have links to all this stuff down in the description. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is prep our LEDs and we're gonna be cutting them to size and soldering two wires on them so that we can connect our JST connectors to those wires. So let's get to it. So we're gonna take, this is our white LED and we're just gonna match it up to the length of our mount. And we wanna cut along these copper terminals. And looks like I can fit just about half of that terminal on there. So we'll go ahead and take our flush cuts and give that a snip. I'll just test to make sure that it fits. And that is perfect. So the next thing to do is just peel off a little bit of the clear outside coating so that we can get access to these terminals and we will solder on a couple inches of wire. And just like that, we got a nice solder joint. Now what we can do is just let that cool down for a second we can peel the back off and stick this onto our 3D printed part. All right, so we got that stuck in place just like that. And this is gonna sit on the back of the gantry and we'll have our wires coming off to the left side down by where the stepper motor goes. Now all I'll have to do is just put a pin on each one of these wires so I can insert that into my JSD connection and that'll just give me the ability to have some quick disconnect if I ever want to, uh, and just make it a little bit easier for the install. So let's go ahead and we will repeat the same exact step for our small LEDs, and we will be doing this with our red one. All right, so this is what we're left with for the two bottom sides. Now that we got everything soldered on, we can go ahead and put our pins in place for the JST connectors and get those put in. So this is what it's gonna look like after we get the JST connectors put on. Just simply crypt them and insert the pins in place. Here's these ones. So now we'll move the camera over and we will install these on the printer. After we get these installed, we will run the wiring. So I went ahead and threw on that LED on the back of the gantry. You can see that it's gonna shine down nice and neat on our print bed. I also have, probably gonna be a little tougher to see, but you can see the connector sticking out. I got the underglows mounted 
I also went ahead and mounted my LMC buck converter right back here. This will be nice and out of the way, plus it's close to the power supply unit for our wiring. And we can run our wires to the switches, just down, over, and then forward. I'm gonna place the switches right up here next to my easy ABL module. They're just housed inside these nice little boxes. I am gonna have to take this front off so I can slide it on. As you can see, the lower part slides on the rail and then it just gets captured by one of these wing nuts and a M3 bolt. Now I do really like these mounts. I'll post a link to them in Thingiverse. They also have a little hole to run the wires down. So this will actually let us run the wires in the groove really nice and cleanly. And like I said before, it'll be coming from the back up to the front where we go into the switches. Now I'm gonna have to solder on some wires right here. Um, basically, I'm just gonna go in from the hot side uh, and I'm gonna be switching on and off power instead of switching on and off ground. These are rated for more than plenty of the amperage that we need. And I'm just gonna run a wire from that butt converter over and then up. We'll have one going up here and I'll probably integrate it into this wire loom um, track back here, going up to the gantry. And then we'll have the other power wires just going down and I'll daisy chain these two uh, underglows together. So let's get at it. First, we gotta run from the power supply unit to our butt converter. And I'm just gonna guess probably about, that should be plenty to go under and over. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tap into our V positive and V negative on the bottom of our power supply unit. Obviously the red is going to go to the positive and the black is going to go to the negative. All right, so we got our wires coming down from the power supply unit main and they are sticking out right here. We got them cut to a good length to go into our input of our butt converter. All we gotta do now is just strip it and go ahead and insert it. Now for my particular butt converter, positive is gonna be on top and negative will be on bottom. Next thing we need to do is pull out enough wire to go over and up to our switch. So we'll do that now. So I went ahead, cut these to length and stripped them. I'm gonna put these to the side for now because I realized I'm gonna have to solder these in to our switches first. And then what I can do is I can feed all the wire through in here, put the switch in. So I'm gonna need to now measure the amount of length I need to go from the switch to the LEDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. What I'll do is I will solder them all together and then we will come back here and put the switches in place. So this is what we got. We have our two switches mounted on the side. We have our overhead switch in the back and our underglow lights in the front. We're gonna run this basically back up along those chains that feed the uh, stepper motor and then it's gonna get a JST connector soldered onto it. Then we'll run our negative wire basically along the same exact route. And the negative wire will just go directly into our LMC uh, voltage converter. So what I'll have to do is just solder on the female side of the JST connector for this and that'll plug into our connector up here. 
completing the circuit. So basically we have our switch on the positive side and the ground is just one straight uncut wire going back to the voltage converter. So we'll go ahead and run those two. I'm also gonna wrap these in wire sheathing while I'm at it just to make it look nicer uh, as well as this one. So this is what the main power to the LMC buck converter looks like. We'll go ahead and route that back right now, make it look nice and clean. And all I gotta do is just strip these ends and insert that into the screw terminal. So this is where we're at now. We've got the power going from our voltage converter to our switches. Now we just need to run the power from the switches up to our LEDs and then the ground back to the LMC converter. All right, so I got all my wires ran. Basically, the last thing left to do is just hook up our ground into our buck converter. What I did is I took all three of the grounds and I soldered them into one lead. That way, it's just a little easier to insert into the screw terminals because the buck terminal that I bought has kind of smaller size screw terminals. So fitting two of these uh, 22 gauge positive wires in was kind of tough. I figured three might give me a battle. So it just took me a couple seconds to twist together these three and solder on one little lead. As you can see here, the wires on the back of the gantry are ran up. I'm gonna design a mount to hold the cable chains to mount to this, because right now they're just kind of sitting. But uh, once I do that, this will get brought up and then I can tuck more of that wire and hide that away. But for now, there's plenty of slack for the extra gantry height if I ever need it. Um, down over on this corner, we have our wires connected. And what I'll do is I'll just print out a little uh, rail wire holder and that'll just secure the wires nice and easy up there. This goes to my uh, Raspberry Pi. I need to reflash the octoprint image and find a new home for that. So in case you're wondering what this goes to, but we'll tuck that wire up nice and neat uh, after the fact. And same goes for this side where we have the connection for the underglow down there. So what I'll do is I will strip that ground wire, plug it in and we can power on and test our switches, test our LED lights. We may have to adjust the voltage output on our buck converter. So hopefully not, but we'll see. So we powered it up. There's no smoke. That's always a great sign. Um, I did have to adjust my buck converter a little bit. As you see here, we're getting 24.1 volts on the input and 11.9 volts on the output. It was set to 24 and 24, uh, so it wasn't doing any stepping down. All I did to uh, adjust it is I took this ceramic uh, screwdriver and just twisted this little screw here. I went counterclockwise and that dropped it down. I like the ceramic tip ones just because it uh, prevents any potential for shock if you mess anything up. But now that I got the voltage correctly set, I can test my switches. So we'll go with the overhead first and we got overhead and underglow, we have underglow. So this is a very simple way to run some LEDs on your 3D printer. Um, I do plan on doing a more advanced LED install someday soon using NeoPixels, and those are ind individually addressable LEDs. So you can actually have your program send feedback to them, say when it's heated up, they'll be green, when it's cool, it'll be red, when the print's Finish, it'll flash blue, whatever you want. Um, and we're gonna make a status bar out of those on a future video. But right now I just wanted to get a simple video done on how to make some LEDs on your 3D printer. So there you have it. That's how you install LEDs on your 3D printer. The coolest thing about it is how they look in the dark though. You turn the lights off real quick and you can see just how awesome this printer really looks. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I'll make sure to get to them as quick as I can. And if you want to see more content on how to modify your 3D printer, make sure to hit that subscribe button. My name is Alex, and this is Modified 3D. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.